Good morning, everybody. My name is Joey, and this is my YouTube channel, Bertoni Motors. If you're new to the channel, this is the place where I get to talk about cars and motorcycles, and basically, if it has wheels and an engine and goes fast, I'm probably gonna talk about it because I'm probably interested in it. In today's video, we're gonna talk about my new Bronco. I've been teasing this out for the last few, hell, actual number, 510 days, because that is when I placed my order on the first Bronco, 510 days ago. I wanna talk about the order experience so far, how I'm specking out my Bronco, and then the future plans for the Bronco. That's what this video is going to encompass. There's got a lot to talk about, so, you know, go get yourself a nice glass of water, nice cup of coffee, sit down, because we've got some stuff to talk about. All right. All right, let's talk about this order process because I think it's really important to talk about this because a lot of people have been frustrated with the Ford Bronco order process, but I feel like I might be just a tad bit more frustrated than anyone else. I actually created a timeline of all of this, so I'm going to be referencing notes on my computer just so you guys know. I'm not, you know, reading off a script or anything. I just want to have my notes. So, July 13th, 2020. So, we're at the end of 2021. This is the middle of 2020. The Bronco was unveiled, right? On that day, you were able to drop your deposit on the Bronco. It was a $100 deposit, you picked your dealer, and that was it. You didn't get to spec anything, you didn't, you didn't talk to your dealer, you didn't do anything. So, I decided to use one of my family friend's Ford dealerships, right? Somerville Ford. This is probably the biggest mistake that I could have done. Um, basically, since the very beginning of dealing with Somerville Ford, I have not had any communication with them. And that is, a, that is a continuous theme that you're going to see throughout the Bronco order of video, right? So, ordered on the 13th, didn't hear anything, that was fine. I didn't think I was going to. I got a few emails at the very beginning, like, oh, like very generic emails that were definitely sent by a computer, like, do you want to come and drive the vehicle? I'm like, first off, if you have one, would love to come and drive it. Obviously, I'm in Michigan, Somerville Ford is, I think in the Carolinas, it's farther, farther down. And I was like, if you, if you have one, I'd love to come drive it. Obviously, they're like, oh, sorry, it's not gonna be built to the end of the year. It's like, all right, well then don't send over this stupid uh, pre-done emails, because obviously that's just making people frustrated. So, nothing. Now, we fast forward until March 13th, 2021. This is, what, <sighs> nine months after I placed the order of my Bronco, or I put the deposit down. I get an email saying that the, my Bronco has been ordered. I think that's crazy because I've never talked to anyone at the dealership about what I want my spec to be on my Bronco. I've had no conversations with them. And I get a list of a manual, non-Sasquatch, base, soft top, 2.3 liter engine Bronco, which is so far from what I wanted that I'm I'm frustrated. I'm scared. I like, why is this ordered? What's going on? And once again, I reach out, I call them, I email them, I send them a letter, I do all of these things to try to get someone from Somerville Ford to respond to me, and I got nowhere, absolutely nowhere, right? So that's March 13th, 2021. Now, September 10th, 2021, that goes on for like six months. I'm like, okay, it's just ordered, maybe it's like, oh, it's just like, it means that it's like put into the system, but you'll the dealer will contact me in the next few months to like finalize my spec before it's actually ordered and it's just like a hiccup. It is. Um, so now we're at September 10th, 2021. I'm extremely frustrated. I don't know what's going on. It's been six months since I got the email saying that my order's been placed. I go to social media, right? Social media is basically what I where I go for everything, right? That's my job. That's what I do on YouTube. Like I love social media and I know there's a lot of power behind it. So I reach out to Ford on Twitter. I was like straight in the DMs. I explain the situation. Once again, they're like, oh, have you contacted your dealer? And I'm like, this is the situation. And I've had to repeat that multiple times. I'm like, this is the situation. No one's talking to me. I can't get a response. It's beyond frustrating. They're like, oh, here's a phone number you should call. And I call this phone number disconnected, call them again, disconnected again, call them again. I, be, I leave a voice message, no one responds to me for a few days. I call it again, leave another voice message, no one responds. So this is like Ford's marketing like phone number. And I'm like, mm, this doesn't seem like the right number to call, but everyone is telling me to do that. So no help there. I get out of the DMs and I go straight on like my Twitter feed and I've got like a pretty solid following on Twitter. So like it gets some conversation going like, you know, hey Ford, I need someone to talk to. My Bronco is being ordered. I don't know what's going on. I need help. 
blah, 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 blah. And I do that a few different times over the span of a few weeks, right? I continuously like uh, tweet reply myself, like this is still an issue, it's still an issue, I need help. So September 30th, 2021, I get an email saying that this base Bronco now has a production date. So obviously I'm not going to get the opportunity to spec it out how I want, right? That's long gone, long gone. But I'm like, all right, I'm frustrated. Who am I going to f talk to to get this Bronco situated? So there's an individual, his name's Mike Levine. He's the director of communications for North America. I send him an email and I DM him on Twitter. I explain the situation and you know what? Mike Levine deserves a raise. And one day I hope to see him being, you know, the chief press officer at Ford because he was, we went above and beyond his job. He helped me out. He helped me place the order. He helped me switch my order to a new dealership, um, which is Dremer or Demer Ford in Michigan, which actually is a Ford dealer that I've worked with in the past because I have another Ford vehicle on order, same color. We'll get to that. Um, he was extremely helpful and he got me to where I needed. So that was September 30th. That was the same day that the Bronco, my base Bronco was ordered. Um, without that, I don't know what would have happened. So October 19th, 2021, right? About three or four weeks after that, I get the email with my actual vehicle, spec'd out how I want with a uh, uh, order notification. So we're, we're good. October 28th, 2021. Now I have my Bronco, how I spec it, an actual production date, which is January 3rd, 2022. So we're about five weeks away from that because today's December 5th and we've got you know five or so weeks to go until my Bronco is gonna be ready for me to pick up from the dealership. Lots of content coming. During all this process, I still haven't been in contact with Somerville Ford. I still have, I have two Broncos on order right now. I've got my Bronco that I spec, which we'll go through those specs soon, and the original base Bronco that should be getting produced next week. I don't know if they're gonna call me once it's produced. I don't know if they forgot about me. I don't know if they're gonna steal that allocation and just sell it on the dealership floor. Whatever it was, probably the worst dealership experience I've ever had. Could you imagine waiting for a year and a half without a, without a single communication from them of regarding your order? Just garbage of an experience. So my hope is that I'm gonna have two Broncos in January. The one that's being produced that I didn't order next week, and then the one that I did order and spec properly at the first week of January. So that's been the timeline so far. Let's go through the specs now because that's why you guys are watching this video and that's the fun part. for the actual specking out of my 2022, supposed to be 2021, Ford Bronco. So going into this, I I didn't really know what I wanted. Um, there were a few things on the list that I wanted. One was I didn't want a black or a white Bronco. I wanted something with color, something that would pop in photos. And I've just been so tired of having black cars. I had three black cars last year, right? I had the Jetta, I had the BMW, and I had my Ram truck. And it was just too much black. And Moving forward in life, I'm only going to have very colorful cars because the world needs them. Um, I thought about two-door, I thought about a four-door, and while the four-door Bronco is probably way more useful than a two-door Bronco is, ultimately I chose the two-door because it just looks better. Um, and now hard top for soft top. These are like the big things that you talk about before you like figure out which spec you want. Um, I didn't want a soft top because I knew I was going to be putting stuff on top of it. A rack, a tent, you know, shovels. I'm going to overland this thing. I really am. And I thought a hard top would just make more sense. And obviously that kind of screwed me because the hard tops had all of those issues. They couldn't figure out how to do the molding colors. And that basically pushed my Bronco order out a few more months than I wanted it to. But here we are. Um, at first, I was just gonna go with a base two-door Bronco. Uh, I thought it was cute, I thought it was great, it was everything that I wanted, it wasn't too much, and it was it was fairly cheap. And then I realized I couldn't get something that I really enjoy in cars, and that is a heated steering wheel and a heated seat. So, base, you can't get it. Big bend, you can. not uh, You can, and then black diamond, obviously everything above the big bend, you can get. My thought is, all right, the black diamond might be a little too aggressive for what I want. Like, is it really worth that extra four grand? 
I don't really think so. So I chose the Big Ben model and I chose the two door and not the four door. So let's go in, let's start the build. Like right away, the car looks great. And this is with the non Sasquatch package, right? These are just the normal wheels and it looks good. But I can't buy a Bronco and not get the Sasquatch package, right? And obviously the Sasquatch package is a little more money, $7,000, right? That's the price of a Royal Enfield, which is crazy. But it comes with those, you know, 17 inch, the black high gloss, uh, aluminum painted with the warm alloy beauty ring, you know, look at those you know now you have the 35 inch tires stock from the factory which is just insane now looking through colors when i ordered this first off the green the eruption green was not available and i don't know if i would have actually chose it but if you guys know me you know i love a good forest green probably my favorite color out there um i liked the what is it with a cactus gray where is that one is that it cactus gray i thought it was a cool color um kind of like a good base color but ultimately i wanted more color to it um the cyber orange i don't really like it i don't think it's a great color uh and then the what was it this one this one just came out the hot pepper red metallic i think it's great color i think it would look kind of better on a mustang than a bronco so ultimately i chose race red and I have, so like a big spoiler, big, if you guys are listening for the future, I've got another Ford vehicle on order that's also race red. So race red Bronco and something else coming in the next few months. Um, we're gonna have just a full race red garage soon. So 35 inch tires, right? The 31570 70 on the 17 inch wheel. Um, the roof, the roof is the hard carbonized gray, the molded in uh, color. Um, I think it's a great looking roof, good patterns. I really like the top, how you could take the driver's side or the passenger side out without taking off this back part. Um, I wish, and I know that we're going to do this in the future, but Jeep does a really good job of having a body colored roof. And I think that is one of the best looking things that you can do on a Jeep Wrangler. It really ties it together and makes it a very premium vehicle. I would have loved to be able to get that on my Bronco. Unfortunately, that's not an option. Um, so I'm, I have to go with the gray. Will I take that off in the summers? Meh, probably, probably not. It's a pain in the ass to take off a roof, honestly. And it's just easier to like, you know, roll your windows up, put those top panels on and you're good. But look at that. It does look good when it's off. Take the doors off, damn. Look at, see, see how you still have the mirrors. The mirrors aren't attached to the door. Look at that Jeep, you could have figured it out. Look how Ford did it. All right, so doors back on, roof off, or you could take the doors off, that's kind of cool. I feel like people are so douchey when they like ride or drive around without doors on, so let's throw it back on. Bumpers, I didn't decide, I didn't wanna do the Ford bumper. I didn't think there was really a value of adding that. Um, yeah, it would've been nice to add to like the final payment, um, but I think there's going to be a lot of really interesting bumpers coming to the market and I didn't like this. I just don't think it's very good looking. So take that off. Boom. Um, body armor, protective moldings. What's this? Designed to mer, mer, mer. made from tough. Mer, oh, yeah, black. I don't. Oh, that's on like the back. That's interesting. This is new. This is not available when I was making my order. Um, fender flare kit. I did not get splash guards. I did not get door. I didn't get paint protection film. No, because I'm going to go to my friend at midnight, uh, uh, midnight, what are they called? Midnight Graphics, uh, Chad's company. I'm gonna have them just do some PPF, um, basically like fender down and like the front of the hood just to protect it. The body appearance package wasn't available. The spare tire cover wasn't available. Like I didn't get any of that stuff because I'm going to be using it. Um, roof rails with crossbars. Looking back on it, this was something that I wish I ordered and I forgot to do it. Uh, it's really easy to install. But now I have to go buy one and it's fine because I found an OEM uh, Ford roof rail. Uh, that's, it's the exact same thing, right? Same part number. And these little things here, let's see if I can pull this up. These, see these little indentions on the roof? Those pop out once these are off. You basically throw in a screwdriver from the bottom or from the top. They pop forward. The roof rail attaches here and then attaches back here and it is ready to go. And then you have a roof rack on and you can attach things like a tent. So, no tube step, no brush guard, no wheel lock, no engine heater, 
keyless entry that's something i wish i got a lot of people took them off the door and put them in the gas tank i think that's super interesting um it's nice to have now interior not a lot of options with this so you either had the dark space gray with the black onyx or you have the let's see the medium sandstone which is like this beige obviously i got the black i think that's just the best option it looks great simple block cargo area i got nothing for the cargo area because i'm ultimately going to be you know probably taking off these rear seats so i have more room uh so no cargo protection whatsoever i did get the auxiliary switches in the overhead uh console with the front map lights so that basically adds this up top so this part let's see brown this part up here right and all of those wires are already included so you have wires coming to the front for like front lights you got them coming to the roof you got them in the back lights everywhere wherever you need electricity you can you now have them all because of that and like these cables aren't just for lights you can also like have them to plug in you know your external battery pack like from goal zero or your dometic fridge to keep that charge there are a lot of smart things there so i wanted that no floor liners. I already bought WeatherTech floor liners. WeatherTech, they are a US based company. Huge fan of them. I actually went to college with one of their sons, Cooper, who races cars in endurance racing. So he's gone to Le Mans. I've seen him at Le Mans. So I want to support their company. I think they do a lot of cool stuff. Um, no cargo net, no storage bags. I, th this comes with it, which is cool. The hard top sound deadening. Obviously, I wanted that. Uh, if I'm going to be doing a lot of like highway miles and stuff like that, it's nice to be a little quieter in there. Uh, tailgate table. This is something that's really cool, and I found a lot of companies that do this. Um, I didn't buy this one because, once again, I wanted to support you know not not just Ford but other companies that are building this on like Etsy and people are like building this themselves. Um, I think it's really cool. It's going to be great to have for like making coffee or potentially working all of that stuff out of the back of the truck. So that will be coming. Um, safe deposit console lock box. This is new. This was not available when I was ordering my Bronco and I wish I got this. It's not very big though. That's the issue. Oh no, no, don't do that. So we're gonna take that off. Um, sync four, that's what I got. No worries there. You know, it's got six speak audio. It's got the eight inch display. Like that display is great. More than enough for what I need. Um, and now engines. There are two engines, the 2.3 and the 2.7. The only difference is about 60 horsepower and like 50 pound foot pounds of torque, I believe, something like that. It wasn't the biggest of difference. I've driven a Ranger with the 2.3 and the 2.7. I decided to go to the 2.3. I think I'd be more than happy with that, but that might be one of those issues, one of those things that we talk about, you know, in three months on what did I learn about buying the Bronco that I would hope people buy in the future. Um, now that I know that there's a Raptor Bronco coming, who knows that two three is going to make me really sad when I see that there's a twin turbo uh, eco boost that's coming out of the Ford Raptor into it. Who knows? Uh, obviously, you get the advanced four by four, the automatic on demand engagement, right? So that's like all those goat modes. That's something that also you get in the big bend versus the base model. You get more options in this automatic. This is like goat switch, right? See how that one doesn't have the bottom and this one does. That's what you get more stuff uh i went with an automatic transmission not a manual transmission and here's why i don't enjoy driving suvs and trucks with manual transmissions especially when i'm going to be dailying this i don't think it's going to be worth it it seems like the automatic transmission that is in the bronco is so good it would just be you know a waste of time to want a manual you know if you you don't think i'm a man enough for not getting the manual option that's fine i have two other cars that have a manual i'll be fine um standard package versus mid package i upgraded to the mid package and here's why front row heated seats and heated steering wheel in addition to that there's an actual ac power outlet so like the plugs you have in your house in the vehicle i have that in my ram and it has saved me so many times it's so nice to be able to plug in my laptop and charge it as i drive you know i'll be having the dometic fridge i'll be having you know goal zero i'll be having all of these things that will be needing traditional ac power and that's the way to do it um what else the voice recognition which is cool the connected navigation uh and the nice black diamond interior shown so i got all of that sasquatch package already chose 
and towing capacity. I need that because I'm going to be putting either a trailer behind it or like a motorcycle, uh, one of the, what is it called? Like a jack stain on the back that you can like roll up a motorcycle. Why can't I think of it? Not like a motorcycle trailer. I don't know what it's called. So this is, this is my Ford Bronco. Let's look at it. Race red, Sasquatch package, hard top. It's good looking. Especially when you start thinking about, let's come on, scroll, blah, blah, blah. Especially when you start thinking about there's going to be a big roof rack on it. There's going to be a tent. You know, there's going to be a motorcycle out back. It's going to be my little adventure vehicle. And I'm really excited for this. Um, obviously, there are so many other ways to spec out a Bronco. But this is how I wanted to do, right? I think the red is great. I would kick myself if I didn't get the Sasquatch moving forward. Um, I'm really interested to see how these seats fold, fold down. Um, I might just take them out completely. I know that there are companies that make a kit that like level out this entire back. And I might even, yeah, I'll probably keep the front seat, but things, things that give me as much space as possible in the two door. You know, thinking about would an overlanding, or like would an, a four door make a better vehicle for overlanding? Yeah, absolutely. Is that what I wanted? No, not really. I wanted the two door. I think it looks better. And that's why I went with this two door Badland spec. Would love your thoughts on it. Throw it down in the comments below, but let's move on with this video. All right. So you guys now have seen my spec race red Bronco. I'm excited for it. Let's talk about the future. And it's the future of me, the future of this channel, just the future. I have been, I have been thirsting for an adventure for the last few years. I feel like this COVID lockdown has taken a toll on me, right? You know, I came to Detroit after living in Berlin where I was able to do a lot of like weekend adventures. And before that I was in New York and I, I was just always on the move. And I gotta do so much and see things and travel for work. And just, I got to experience a lot. And over this last two years, I've basically been stuck at my house. And you guys have been part of that journey. You know, you've, you've heard the vlogs, you know, I wasn't happy, I needed to do something different. And this Bronco is coming to me at a time that I feel like is, it's too good not to take advantage of it. So, over the next few months, uh, I'm hoping to leave at the end of January. I'm going to outfit my Bronco uh, with a tent, um, fridge, all of that stuff, and I'm gonna go for a few month little adventure. Uh, I'm gonna basically head south at the end of January. I wanna make sure I get to the 24 hours of Daytona race. If you guys don't know, I love endurance racing. It's probably my favorite racing series, just above Formula One. And I've never been to Daytona. So I'm gonna go there. And from there, I'm just gonna like bounce around the Southern states for a while, right? I wanna go to Atlanta. I wanna go to Yamaha US headquarters. They're there, try to get a few press bikes, test those out. Triumph is there. I've got a lot of friends in Atlanta. I wanna head over to Alabama. I wanna head over to Texas and then New Mexico, California, and then figure out where things are going from there. Um, along the way, I'm just gonna be riding motorcycles. I'm gonna be focusing on things that make me happy, right? That is being creative, you know, that is focusing on YouTube, focusing on this channel, really making it grow and giving it the 100% that I wanna do. And then in addition, I'm, I started an ad agency. Uh, an ad agency, wow, I can't, I can't speak today, an ad agency. Um, over the last 10 years, I've been working for really large advertising agencies and I've been lucky enough to work with clients like, you know, BMW, Mini, Mercedes-Benz, Mercedes-Benz Europe, you know, uh, Smart, uh, Ram Trucks, Maserati, Chrysler, Fiat, Ram Trucks, Jeep, all of these huge automotive OEMs. And what I've realized is that it's great. It's a lot of cool exposure. I have a bunch of Super Bowl commercials, like I've won some awards, but I want to give my experience back to smaller automotive companies that potentially don't have the money to hire these big agencies that I'm used to working at. So I've created my own ad agency, barnado.co. And there's a huge, if, if you're into cars, Barnado, Wolf Barnado, Google it. The stories around this individual are so fascinating and so cool. That is just really a cool idea to like, kind of like take that name and make an ad agency out of it. That really focuses because I feel like we would have been great friends, me and that Wolf Barnado gentleman. So, and the Barnado bros in general. Um, let me make sure I'm doing what I'm doing. So, talking back to, to the Overland setup, I'm looking for sponsors. 
I'm gonna start reaching out to a few of you, Go Fast Campers, Thule, you know, Goal Zero, Dometic, all of these companies that need, that make overlanding products, I'm gonna need to retrofit onto my, my Bronco um, just so I can survive. Like I'm not going to be going to hotel to hotel, it's too expensive. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to find a, you know, a rooftop tent that will fit the Bronco, potentially even for free, you know, exposure for, you know, nice photography, things like that. And just travel around the world, travel around the lower part of the US for a while, you know, get access to a few press bikes, press cars, and just really continue to push YouTube where I want it to go. And if you're in a state that I'm going to be traveling through, let me know. I'm going to be really good at like letting people know like where I'm going to be at what time and all of that for like my own safety. But also I want to connect with you, right? If you're in Alabama, let me know. Would love to go get coffee with you, talk, whatever. You have a cool car to show. Yo, let's make a video on it. You want to go ride motorcycles? Let's go ride motorcycles. That's something else. I'm in a few conversations with, autom with motorcycle OEMs on different bikes. Um, that I could potentially garner, potentially gain for this trip of mine. And you know, just to you know, throw on the back of the Bronco so I have a bike during this process. Right now, because the Ducati and the Royal Enfield I still have, they aren't, they aren't sold yet. Neither of those bikes are kind of perfect for what I'm looking for. I'm looking for like, you know, a KTM 690 Enduro or the Yamaha, like a WR450F or the Tenere 700, something like that. But more to come on that. More to come. Um, that's kind of my plan. So southern part of the US, you know, West Virginia, Smoky Mountains, Florida, Alabama, Arkansas, New Orleans, um, probably into Texas, New Mexico, California, and then do all like the Japanese OEM manufacturers that are in LA, right? So like Kawasaki. Um, Triumph has a bunch of press bikes out there, KTM's out there, Husqvarna's out there, Suzuki's out there, Honda's out there, they're all out there. <clears throat> and that's my goal, is basically create as much content, be as creative as I can. You know, I'm going to get my drone license over the next few weeks, so more drone footage coming to the channel, and just an opportunity for me to be more creative and adventure. Something that I feel like I've been really missing for my life over the last few years. This Bronco is going to be, you know, this key element in my channel's growth, but also my personal growth. And I'm really excited to bring you guys along. Now, sign off. This has been a long video. It's kind of been more of a life update video than a spec video, but that's what this channel is for, right? It's an opportunity for me to talk to you, with you guys and gals, all about what's going on in my life, what changes are happening. It's not just about motorcycle news, like this is my channel and I want to bring more of my personality onto the channel and you know, hopefully that helps it grow. My sister texts the family group chat, why'd she do that? She ruined this video, so Nina, if you watch it this far, you suck. Oh, but all right, I'm excited where this Bronco video is gonna go, or this Bronco series is going to go. Really excited, really excited to connect to all of you. Um, if you haven't already, like this video, subscribe to this video. Obviously, there's gonna be a lot more Bronco content coming soon. So, thank you all for watching. This is Joey from Bertoni Motors. Appreciate y'all. Go out there and ride safe.